how do we actually get rid of sound? This is what it is, but if you don't want to hear the neighbors in the next room, or if you want to make sure that you've blocked out all of the other sound that's possible, what do you do to get rid of a compressional wave? Well, one thing you could do is simply try to bounce them away. Here's a beautiful structure, and there's a traffic over there, a highway going by over here, and the noise from all the cars hits these things, and it's reflected up into space as opposed to going back into the rest of the building. They're also kind of beautiful. So that works to some extent. After all, if a wave, a compressional wave hits something, it will bounce off. It's not like light. It's not like a mirror where it perfectly reflects, but generally you'll get a compression and that compression will bounce and the sound will travel and fill the space. Much more effective than simply trying to redirect the sound in another way is to actually try to absorb it. There's no magic in this. You've got compressional waves of air, of density, of slightly higher density. So what you want to do is make sure that as those waves of air with that density in it goes into something, it finds it very difficult to get back out. So let's say I had some shape like this and maybe some other shapes like this. All right? And so if my wave comes in here, and here's the denser part, denser part, right? And I get all the way down here, if I have some reflection, well, maybe this will reflect up this way and this way, this will reflect this way. It'll be very hard for it to reflect all the way out. And that's the concept of soundproofing. The sound should go in, and all of that compression wave density should get lost, and nothing comes back. Let's look at some examples of some soundproof rooms. So here is a great soundproof room. Look at those tetrahedral, pyramid-like shapes, all pointing out, all made undoubtedly of some type of soft foam material. Any sound waves generated in the middle of this room will go to the edges and be absorbed there. The longer those fingers are sticking in, the better the soundproofing is. Here's another example. Notice that they have these, in this case, these triangles of absorber material, and they don't have them all even in the same direction. And this helps break up any type of pattern or any type of uh, uh, in-phase reflection. And again, they go in quite deep, and this will allow the sound being created in the room to only go outward and not return, giving it an extremely quiet background. And of course, making it such that anybody outside of this room won't hear what's going on inside either. Get another example, cross crisscross pattern, making sure to cover every one of the walls. You see what happens if you want to find out if you can hear me in the next room is that when the sound wave hits the wall, the wall starts vibrating a little bit, and that means it starts pushing the air on the other side of the wall too. And when it does that, your voice carries on into the next room. The actual material is made of some type of foam material that has individual cells. And what happens to the energy that's in your sound waves is that that energy actually is turned into heat. The vibration of the cells, and I'm not talking about biologic cells here, I'm talking about small cells of this material, small little pockets of this material. They'll be induced to vibrate. When they do, they'll rub against one another, and your sound is turned into heat. Not very much heat. You're not going to be able to set something on fire by yelling at it. But you will take care of the energy that was in your sound waves and dissipate it into this type of material. So this works well, but notice you need some very large structures to do it. You really don't want to hear other things 
you would need to put all of them inside these giant massive foam rooms. Or you could use some science. Here is a pair of noise canceling headphones. I actually have a pair of these to wear on airplanes. They're wonderful. You don't realize how loud an airplane is just because of the jet engines and the fact you're going 500 miles an hour <laughs> through the air, but they're, uh, they're pretty loud. These allow you to cancel that noise, and it does it with a computer that's embedded inside here. You see, here would be two sound waves, and if they're in phase with each other, they add up to this one, and you can see that the amplitude is even larger. But if I had two sound waves and I put them out of phase with each other, then when I sum them up together, I hear nothing at all. Basically, the air compression and the trough, and then the compression and the trough, I'm going to make another sound that's exactly the opposite, that has the air compressed where the other troughs were. So that way, both those noises together, the air is just normal density the whole way across, the same density, and my ear doesn't hear anything at all. So can I do that? Yeah. Because in a very, very fast electronics, it senses the sound, the noise, and then it creates anti-noise. And it's not that noise comes in one ear and anti-noise in the other. Both headphones do this. It has a microphone picking up the outside noise, a computer which will generate the right frequency distribution and amplitude distribution of the anti-noise, and then it broadcasts the anti-noise to your ears. You hear the regular background noise from outside. Those things together add up to this resulting noise. You can turn on the noise-canceling headphones and just basically hear almost nothing. But of course, you can then, on top of that, hear whatever you're trying to hear, which will sound much better without having the background noise come into play.